All right, gonna do a video here today called the post-trib fib. And this is a video exposing the false doctrine and heresy of the post-tribulation rapture and proving a pre-tribulational rapture. Now, one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is you have a heretic out there named Ed Fenninger who said in the video, I'll play the clip, he says that during the time of Jacob's trouble, basically you, you have eternal security and that you just be taking the, your fusion the mark is not part of salvation. And part of why I'm doing this video is proving that doctrine in the time of Jacob's trouble is different than today. And I'm going to show you verses in the Pauline epistles which are written to us today. Romans 11, 13 and a bunch of other scriptures say that Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. I'm going to show you verses in the Pauline epistles that directly contradict both verses in Revelation which are in the time of Jacob's trouble and show that salvation and doctrine is different in that time period. Now I'm going to play the clip of Ed Fenninger saying that taking the mark of the beast is not part of your salvation and that uh, it's an act of faith and whatever. Nutty nonsense. He claims to be a dispensationalist but just he has a phony version of dispensationalism. Watch the clip. Here it is. But the real issue comes down to eternal security in the tribulation and a faith work system. The uh, these guys are coming out with the faith works. They think because you take you don't take the mark of work, that's a work. It's a work that shows faith, just like just like the Hebrews 11. It's a work. It's not a work that's part of your faith. In other words, gives gives you salvation. It's a work that shows. You have faith. That's what that. That's what not taking the mark will show. You have faith. If you take the mark of the beast, it shows you haven't faith. That's the, that's the crucial thing. Your faith will be shown up by what you do, but it shows what you believe. It isn't part of that you uh, that the work somehow added or met or, or, or blended in with um, with your uh, your faith, which is uh, can't happen. The fact is, is uh, uh, grace. It's going to be the all grace, or it's going to be all works. And faith is what goes goes with work with grace, uh, not uh, not works. So the works not taking the mark will show who's saved and who's not. I mean, the, the guy is so messed up. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I'm going to show you some scriptures proving a faith work system in the time of Jacob's trouble, and that will prove that the rapture must happen for the for the body of Christ must happen before the time of Jacob's trouble, because what Paul wrote, I'm going to show you in these verses, what Paul wrote directly contradicts what is basically going to happen and what doctrine is in the time of Jacob's trouble. So let's begin. Romans chapter 3 verse 22 to 28 it says, what does it say? Pull it up. Romans 3 22, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ uh, on, sorry, unto, unto all, sorry I'm not good at reading on the computer, unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference. For all of sin to come short of the glory of God, being just, justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, uh, whom God set, hath set forth to be propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might, that he might be the just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Uh, where is boasting then? Is it excluded by, by what law? By, of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Uh, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. This verse proves that keeping the law and doing the commandments is not part of salvation. Well, that actually would contradict what is written in Revelation 12, verse 17. I'll read that for you. Revelation 12, verse 17. And it says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, or yet wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Keeping the commandments of God? Um, I thought Romans or I thought Romans three says we're not, you know, keeping the law is not part of our salvation. You know? It says the remnant of, of her seed which keep the commandments of God. You have two passages that are contradicting each other. And of course, Revelation 14, verse 12 also says, Here are the patience of saints that, which keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. There is a faith plus work set up in the time of Jacob's trouble. So the rapture must happen before that time period because if Paul is right, I mean, they can't both be right. Either Paul is right or the time of Jacob's trouble is for us today or we're getting taken up before that time period. It's clear. The rapture must happen before the time of Jacob's trouble or else... Paul is a liar, because what he's writing directly contradicts. Now, next verse, Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39. Romans 8, 35 to 39, let me pull it up. It says, uh, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, 
or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Uh, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor depth, nor height, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. A really good passage proving eternal security. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Um, that would be a problem because in the time of Jacob's trouble, if you take that mark, you are separated. It's kind of a problem right there. Let me go to that verse. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 to 11. Here's a verse that proves that, again, there's a faith work set of And Ed Fenninger says, oh, you know, taking, refusing the mark is not part of your salvation. Mm, let's see about that. Revelation 14, verse 9 to 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the shame shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Hmm. Whosoever? Uh, they will taste the wine of the wrath of God. Hmm. Kind of contradicts Romans 8, 35, 39, where it says nothing can separate you from the love of God. Hmm. So the rapture must happen before this time period because Paul, what Paul wrote in Romans 8 contradicts that. So if a Christian goes into that time period and loses their salvation, Paul's a liar. And God is a liar too because Paul wrote that under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Kind of a problem there if you're a, a post-tripper. Now onto the really good scripture. Now, Here's some good verses just proving that there is a works. I mean, some of these verses don't mention works by name, but this here's a verse that proves that in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, there is no works in part of our salvation. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, there is works. Let me show you that. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 8 to 9. Be not thou, sorry, again, not good at reading on a computer. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, neither for of me his prisoner, but he thou partake, or, yeah, be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Verse 9, Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace, which is given, uh, given us by, in Christ Jesus before the world began. <laughs> not according to our works. That would contradict Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Let me read that. Revelation 3, verse 1 to 5. Let me just pull it up. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars, I know thy works, and thou hast a name, or, sorry, again, not good at reading on a computer. Thou hast a name, and thou that thou hast liveth, and art dead. Verse 2, Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. He hadn't found his works perfect before God? Hmm. Interesting. Remember therefore how that how thou hast received hard and hold fast, repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come as to unto thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Verse four, thou hast few names, even Sardis, I think that's how you say it, which have not defiled their garments, they shall walk uh, with me in white, for they are worthy. Verse 5, He that overcometh, look at that, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white remnant, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess him before, confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Huh. He that overcometh, and it says he will not blot his name out of the book of life. Um, that would also contradict Ephesians 1.13, which says you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, you can be blotted out of the book of life in the time of Jacob's trouble. And look at that. You know, it says how I have not found thy works perfect before God. Uh, again, 2 Timothy 1, verse 8 and 9, you know, not according to our works. It's a contradiction there. See, it's two different dispensations, and it proves that the rapture must happen before this time period because these are two contradicting passages. So if a Christian goes into that time period, God's a liar. God is contradicting himself. It doesn't work. The rapture must happen before the time of Jacob's trouble. Because if, it, if, that, if, if there is a post-trib rapture, then the Bible is a contradiction. The Bible becomes a lie. So those are some verses proving a pre-tribulational rapture. And the proper term is the time of Jacob, or I mean not time, the proper term for the, the coming time period is the time of Jacob's trouble. The popular term for this, this, uh, this event is the catching away of the bride of Christ. We're, we're called up. 
you know, it's not the rapture, but it's just, I'm using that term so people know what I'm talking about. So anyway, thank you for watching. Don't be deceived by this, this satanic heresy of the post-trip rapture. God bless you. Goodbye.